A new nominee to lead the Department of Health and Human Services. President Trump said this morning, quote, happy to announce I am nominating Alex Azar to be the next HHS secretary. He'll be a star for better health care and lower drug prices. He also sent that tweet from the state of Pennsylvania, which I don't understand. That's a little weird. <laughs> Azar uh, served as the deputy secretary of HHS under President George W. Bush. Azar currently owns a pharmaceutical consulting firm. He used to be an executive at the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly. Joining us now is Andy Slavitt. Andy knows a thing or two about these things. He's a former acting administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, now a senior advisor at the Bipartisan Policy Center in Washington. Who just, did you just happen to run into uh, Azar? Heading over to your show in line in the cab station. Alex was right in front of me. You know him? I know him. What, what, tell okay, us. Tell us on. what happened. Heading in line for a cab, you know this. He's about to live a very different life than Tom Price did. <laughs> That's right. Taking Tom a would have uh, chartered a plane. What, 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 tell me, what, can you tell us what you talked about? Sure. I, you know, we start with this. I mean, he and I come from uh, different sides of the political sure. spectrum. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to agree on everything. Uh, but, you know, he's somebody who, uh, before he served in the private sector, was, was at HHS. I think he, he was very excited to go back. I asked him specifically about uh, the thoughts that he's going to get around his closest to the, to the pharmaceutical industry. He said, I know how it works, I think, was, 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 was pretty much close to the exact quote. Um, he is, you know, eager to serve. He wants wanted to express to me that he is uh, looking to work across the aisle, so let's hope that that's true. I think a secretary coming in at this point in time has a number of challenges, a very contentious agenda, as we all know, around taking access to care away from people. Hopefully, he can be strong enough to take a stand to reverse that, and I think that's what the hearings are likely going to be about. And did you feel encouraged? Do you believe him when he said he's, he's excited to work across the aisle? Well, look, I think it's a good thing to say. Number one. Number two, I think, you know, I have a sense of who some of the other potential choices could have been. And I think, you know, this is somebody who knows uh, the, the knows HHS, uh, is, you know, serious minded, is qualified. Uh, and for him to, you know, I think his priorities have to be to, number one, focus on the people, the, particularly the most vulnerable, vulnerable Americans that he serves. You know, number two, like a Jim Mattis to figure out how to stand up to President Trump and some of his most outlandish ideas. And number three, he has to make gestures to work across the aisle because this political stalemate is just not going to get us anywhere. And supporting Murray Alexander and that bill to yep. improve the ACA would be a good step there. Well, Andy, you know a lot about Medicare and Medicaid. Medicaid, Medicaid expansion was really the bigger part of the Affordable Care Act, the part that, that really matters a lot. Uh, he supports conv uh, converting Medicaid from an entitlement program that goes to anyone who's el eligible into block grants to states. Can you, because you're really good at this, in, in 30 or 40 seconds. Can you tell us what that means? Well, sure. I think converting Medicaid to a block grant is ending the 50-year-old commitment we have to provide care for low-income people, for seniors, for people living with disabilities, and cap our responsibility. It's not a good idea. I think we have uh, seen that most recently in the only block grant that we have in this country right now in health care and Medicaid is in Puerto Rico. And, and that is proving to be an enormous challenge. So, you know, this is not a policy area that I think makes sense. I hope he gets, um, you know, grilled on that extensively at his Senate hearing. And hopefully he'll realize that to build bridges, we've got to provide care to more people, not fewer. I don't know, Andy, it definitely sounds like he's on a different uh, side of the aisle from you. But uh, it's, you sound pretty positive about it. Well, look, again, um, you know, people coming into these roles, uh, you know, I have no illusion that President Trump's going to appoint somebody who's going to agree with me and, and, and the things that right. I believe in. But having said that, I want someone qualified. I want someone who will take this seriously. I want someone who will look out for vulnerable and low-income people. Yep. I think we should push that and, 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 uh, and hope, for, hope for the best. He's a, he's a qualified candidate, and uh, I hope that... Um, you know, he indeed, if he does serve, um, serves in the way we're talking about. Thanks, All right, Andy. Then. Listen, a qualified candidate. We'll take it. Andy Slavitt is a former acting administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And we know that at least uh, Alex Azar took a cab this morning, which is a good start. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.